What's going on guys, LSU Recruiting HQ back with another episode. I'm your host, Michael Sedatal. Today, we got a good video for you guys. As you guys can tell, it has been a while since we have been on. LSU has a new baseball coach, uh, Dara Rosenthal is in the transfer portal, and LSU Athletics is kind of, you know, just chilling track, men's track and field, won a national championship, throw that in there, shout out to them. Uh, like I said, baseball hired Jay Johnson as a new coach, Balmineri's out, and now I think as a fan base, personally, it's football season. As soon as baseball season ends for me, it's football season, college world series wrapped up last night, ain't gonna be much on TV all summer, and it is football season to me. And that's what today's video brings to you guys. Today, I'm going to do a list of my top five new coming players to the LSU football program that could be true freshman transfers. All kinds of stuff. Just got to be their first year at LSU. No red shirts, nothing like that. We're going to make our top five list, and we're going to go ahead and get it started, man. Number five, I got Derek Davis Jr. Now, if y'all haven't heard of Derek Davis Jr., kid out of Pennsylvania, true freshman, coming into LSU this year, was the 64th ranked player in the country last year. Played safety, number four safety in the in the nation last year coming out of high school and if you guys are paying attention during spring ball this kid's name got brought up a lot you know when i was making this list you know part of me was like look at sage ryan you know sage ryan's a safety in-state guy five star you know that's the guy and then you you go back and watch some of the clips from spring you go and look at some of the interviews and it's like this guy looks like, you know, his name got brought up a lot more than Sage's. Now, give Sage some credit. I mean, he didn't get to come but during spring. But as of right now, I think Derek Davis got a lead up in that safety position. You know, that safety position back there is really thin right now. You're looking at, they moved Jay Ward back there. Todd Harris is still back there. And then it's a bunch of guys that you know, we might not have heard of yet, like Sage Ryan, like Derek Davis, but the reason I have him in my top five is because the importance of that position this year, and it is, and how much I think his impact on being back there is going to be for this defense as a whole, because last year it was no secret, the safety position was not a strength, but a very big weakness for LSU. And that's going to be a theme of this list, hint, hint. So, I mean, you can just go and look at the positions on the on the team last year that weren't very great, but, but are going to be better this year because of these people. So, like I said, number five, got Derek Davis Jr., man. Keep an eye out for him, man. He could be a next star LSU Grant Delpit type player. 6'1", has great size, and in in he can play all over the field. So look forward to seeing him. All right, at number four, please forgive me because I can't say this dude's first name to save my life. So I'm going to call him Bug Strong. All right, linebacker out of <laughs> Community College, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Last year was a leader in the JUCO and tackles uh, had 17 tackles for loss 12 quarterback hurries eight sacks two forced fumbles man this is another guy where it's like you look at the interviews during the spring this guy's name comes up a lot a lot even the players are like hey that dude's head hunting man uh there was an interview with damone clark where damone clark was like man this dude is all over the place he flies to the ball now does that translate to sec play yet to see that but as of right now what i'm hearing and what i'm seeing it's looking good i'm liking what i'm seeing so look out for bug strong this fall coming to a stadium near you because if anything this linebacking court can't get any worse so it's all up from here. 
like I said, that's going to be a continuing theme of this episode because LSU needs some help, his linebacker, safety, and that those two positions right there might determine how the whole season goes as far as for that defense. All right, moving on to number three. This one might surprise you guys. You know, I kind of, you know, I, I, not a lot of people would have this person on this list for certain reasons, being that he, he might not even start day one. Like, he's not... He might not even play in the first game, kind of. You know, you never know. But Jack Beck. All right. If you're from Louisiana, you know who Jack Beck is. All right. Uh, leading receiver last year in the state of Louisiana. St. Thomas Moore. Uh, state champion. Just all-around player. And with Arik Gilbert leaving. And Cole Taylor and Nick Storrs being the only two guys left. This dude gets on the field, and you ain't going to be able to take him off. That's just, I'm just being real. I'm being real with y'all. If this dude goes on the field the first two games, they ain't going to be able to get him off the rest of the season. He's he's one of the best pass-catching tight ends that you could possibly have in the SEC. Day one. Day one. And that's not an understatement. That's not overhyping somebody. That's just raw ability. If you've seen this man play, you know what I'm talking about. He He's just different. The fact that he came out of, out of high school so lowly rated is just unbelievable to me. Because you watch this man's film. Yeah, he played for a great quarterback. Yeah, he played for a great team. Who cares? He's one of the reasons that team was great. I mean, man runs up and down the field. He's fast. He's strong. He can block. He can do everything that you want from a tight end. All right? And as you guys know, with Ari Gilbert leaving, that's a position that's that's thin. So he could easily step right into that role and become a day one starter and be an impact player for this team. This man could possibly lead the team in catches at the end of the season. Yeah, I'm talking lead the team in catches. All right, Dad Maul set the tight end record. This man could do it as a freshman. It's that simple. That's why he's number three. He could have been higher if it wasn't for the impact these next two guys are going to make on this team, I feel like. But keep an eye out. Jack Besh going to be a superstar in this league. All right, moving on. I think... Most of you guys, if you're still watching, have a good grip on who is coming next. All right. And, but you might be surprised by the order, honestly. Number two, I got Mason Smith. Now, this is one of those from Louisiana. You follow LSU. You know who Mason Smith is. True freshman, defensive lineman from home of Louisiana. Kiss a piece. I don't know. I really don't know what else to tell you guys. He's a beast. He is a beast. I mean, you watch him during the spring. Man handling grown men. Like, as a kid, still. Like, I mean, it's he's different. He's one of those guys. He's going to end up being one of those guys that is just a difference maker. And he's going to be a top 25 pick in the draft when it's his time to come. And he is going to make this defensive line unit the scariest in the SEC and the scariest LSU has had in a long time. Like, Ollie Gay, Mason Smith, uh, Jaqueline Roy, uh, BJ Ojolari. I mean, them four names right there. I mean, you, you're going to have offensive coordinators in their meetings Monday through Thursday just shaking their head like what are we going to do to block these dudes and Mason Smith is one of those guys because he can win your one-on-ones as a true freshman and if he starts winning one I mean you can't the thing is you can't double team anybody on this defensive line you can't do it the rest of the line is too talented and they go deep I didn't even talk about Glenn Logan and people like that like guys that are coming back for their fifth season I mean this I mean there's going to be this might be the most deep I've ever seen an LSU defensive line. You know, I'm a big believer that offensive line and defensive line is what truly makes or breaks you in the SEC. You look at the Alabamas, you look at the Georgias, their offensive line, their defensive line are the best in the country every single year. 
And that's what gets them. That's what gets you through this grind. When LSU won the national championship, the offensive line won the Joe Moore Award. All right, without the offensive line playing as well as they did at times, and without the guys like Caleb on Chase on people like that to get after the quarterback, you're not going anywhere in this league if you can't sack the quarterback and you can't protect the quarterback. It's like that in the NFL. It's like that in college, especially in SEC ball. All right, if your quarterback don't have time to throw, I go back to. The game, uh, 2018 Alabama game where Joe Burrow just had no time to throw, man. It was, I mean, it wasn't the fact that he couldn't do it. It was the fact that he had no time to do it. So, like I said, you get pressure on these quarterbacks. Mason Smith is going to be that guy for the next three years. He's going to be that guy getting in quarterbacks' faces, making them uncomfortable. And that's why he's number two on my list. Moving on to number one. Once again... Coach O did it, man. This might be another one of those stories, you know. This man might win some postseason awards. You might be hearing about all kinds of stuff. Might win SEC Defensive Player of the Unit. No, never know with guys like this. But bringing in the transfer from Clemson, Mike Jones Jr., why he's number one is, like I said, importance to the roster. All right, Mason Smith could have been number one easily. All right, Jack Beck personally could have been number one easily, but Mike Jones Jr. and his importance to this team is unmatched by anybody on this list. All right, because if he is not great, yes, and I say great, if he is not great, LSU is going to struggle again at the linebacker position. You have Damone Clark. I believe in Damone Clark. I believe he just had a bad year last year. I believe he will be better this year. All right. But if Mike Jones Jr. doesn't have a great year, that unit will struggle again. And it's no secret that they were bad last year. All right, And I believe Blake, uh, Blake Baker is doing a great job. He's doing a great job in recruiting. All right, The guys look like they were flying around during the spring. All right, So I like what I'm seeing. But like I said, coaching only takes you so far. If this kid doesn't come in and make plays immediately... If he's not a, asserting himself as like the day one guy and running all over the field like Devin White, like Patrick Queen, like Jacob Phillips, if he's not doing that, it's going to be a long year, man. That defensive line is going to eat up some blocks. There's going to be some holes to run through and get tackled for loss. It's going to be all over the place, all right? This guy played 29 games at Clemson, all right? Clemson is a powerhouse program, all right? In the college football playoff every single year, all right? This man's not a scrub. Why he transferred, I don't know, all right? I don't really give a damn, all right? He's here now, all right? He's ours. He's finally playing for the real Tigers, all right? And I can't wait to watch him because this man, this man's success is going to lead to so much bigger things for LSU this year, I feel like, all right? Because if this defense gets in check, there's no reason that this team can't win 10 games, 11 games, or even more. You never know, all right? So that's my list, all right? I'm going to go through it one more time with y'all. Number one, Mike Jones Jr., all right? Linebacker, transfer from Clemson. Tr number two, tr true freshman, Mason Smith. Kid's a beast. Kid's going to be all over the place this year. He's going to be just wow like Leonard Fournette wow you're just gonna look at him and just be like what is this what do we do to deserve this kid all right number three the surprise Jack Beck put it in your calendar he breaks the tight end record first year that Moss's tight end record he breaks it number four is Bug Strong another key piece to that linebacking core that has to be better this year and then rounding out the top five Derek Davis Jr. playing safety that safety position again very thin but it's going to be better. Can't be any worse. I like the move that Jay Ward made to safety. We'll see how everything goes and everything turns out. But listen, guys, if you like this video, man, make sure you like it on YouTube. Uh, drop a comment and uh, let me know if you guys want to see another football video, you know, preseason, what you guys are thinking, how how y'all think about, what do y'all think about the list? I mean, all that kind of stuff, man. I want to hear all you guys' thoughts and feedback, and uh, 
You guys can hit me up on Twitter as well, Facebook, all that stuff, man. And uh, let me know, you guys. Make sure to drop a like, uh, support the video, and I appreciate you guys. Thanks.